Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Wing Lam. I am a professor of information technology at U21 Global. Welcome to my presentation on technopreneurship. This presentation is primarily designed for business students and anyone who's interested in the general area of entrepreneurship. Here's what I would like to cover in the next 30 minutes or so. I'd like to share with you what technopreneurship is. I'd like to tell you why I think it's important. I'd like to give you lots of examples of technopreneurship and like to convey to you what I see as the key elements of technopreneurship. Let's start by looking at what I consider to be a highly entrepreneurial company, Amazon.com. At the time, uh, selling and buying books online was certainly something very new and novel. Uh, Amazon saw that as, a, as an opportunity and applied e-business technology to deliver a solution that enabled people to do that. It uh, changed the buying patterns and habits of many consumers and it also presented a new business model. So this is a, a very good example of technopreneurship. Before we look into the definition of technopreneurship, let's first look at what entrepreneurship is. Peter Drucker, uh, recognized to be one of the leading management gurus of our time, unfortunately he passed away a few years ago, wrote a seminal book called Innovation and Entrepreneurship. In the book, he defined entrepreneurship as the practice of consistently converting good ideas into commercial ventures. I've modified this definition slightly to include the concept of innovative ideas. So, for example, if you set up a store selling burgers in the high street, that's not necessarily innovative because it's copying a business idea that's been practiced by companies like McDonald's and Burger King for many, many, many years. So that's not necessarily a good case of being entrepreneurial. Technopreneurship then is a combination of entrepreneurship and technology. It's all about the use of technology as an integral and key element in the transformation of goods and services. And the example that comes to mind is Google. Uh, Google has basically transformed uh, the way we search for information on the internet. It's really transformed the way we do research and the way we organize information. Uh, it's not only product transformation that's important, we're also talking about the transformation of services. So let's look at banking as a classic example here. The picture on the left shows you the kind of banking that would have taken place uh, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Uh, it's really kind of based on going down to a branch and interacting physically with the, 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 the bank managers uh, who, were, who were working at the bank. Uh, you look at banking today and it's all electronic. Uh, it's ATMs, it's mobile banking, it's uh, internet banking. Uh, the use of technology has clearly transformed the way in which we do our banking these days. We can learn a lot of lessons about entrepreneurship from the bursting of the dot-com bubble a few years ago. Here's a quote that I got from a lady called Janice Martinez. She said, technology is great, but if you don't understand the business model, you will fail. In the dot-com era, we had a lot of startup companies with great technical ideas. Unfortunately, those ideas were not supported by a sound and sustainable business model. An interesting question right now is whether Facebook 
has a sustainable business model. Facebook, as you know, is one of the online social networking sites that has mushroomed over the last few years. It's not making much money right now, but certainly there is great potential to make uh, a large sums of money so long as there's a viable business model there. Some people have actually valued the company at over 10 billion US dollars. Whether or not Facebook uh, has a sustainable business model, of course, is something that remains to be seen. Some people might ask the question, well, what's the difference between an entrepreneurial business and a small business? Well, think about a small business like a grocery store in your local neighborhood. Generally, the level of innovation is fairly low. An entrepreneurial business, however, has a high level of innovation. With that comes a high level of risk, unlike the small business, where the risk is generally very, very low. With small businesses, really the idea is to grow very slowly or basically keep at the same level, the same size. An entrepreneurial business, on the other hand, is all about fast, dynamic growth. There's also a driving vision behind an entrepreneurial business. Someone has a vision for what the future is going to be like. In a small business, however, there's typically no real vision behind it. Finally, a small business focuses on having a limited or localized impact, whereas an entrepreneurial business is all about having a significant impact that might change the way people do things in the future. Another nice example of technopreneurship comes from the games industry. I don't know how many of you are games players, but in terms of the major consoles which are out there on the market at the moment, uh, there's the Xbox 360 by Microsoft and the Sony PS3. Both these consoles focus on high level of graphics, uh, primarily designed for the hardcore gamer. On the other hand, the Wii console, which is built by M Nintendo, actually offers a different kind of gaming experience. The innovation comes in the form of the nunchuck and the controller, which are motion controlled, and that gives a very different kind of gaming experience. In fact, the gaming experience is more casual in nature and it's designed for a broader breadth of individuals. So you could find that your grandmother there is playing a number of Wii games. Uh, the point here is that sales of the Wii far outstrip sales of the Xbox and sales of the PS3. That's uh, innovation by a Nintendo that's really made its mark in the game industry.